Keller here. This is the next podcast. This is where we delve into those more finer genres and get deep into the hood of some of the movers and shakers. On to the next out here. Today's guest, I'm very excited to say, is an MC in the grime world, Battle Arena, Radio Pirate Arena, absolute gun toting. <laughs> <laughs> and model for that for that matter, which is always a pleasure to see. Frankie Stay Woke in the Hello, building. Hello, what's going on? And I Neighbours, think. I had no idea. And Neighbours, I know we just discovered that yeah, one. Yeah, I had no like idea. I had, like I said, I had a feeling that you might have been local to where I was, mm. but the fact you're from the same area, it's good. Mm. I'll mess with you more now, yeah, it's fine. See, <laughs> good energy and all yeah, that mom. good stuff. Um, how's it been in the scene at the moment, in the grime scene? Um, for me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you know, um, it's been all right. To be fair, I haven't been as active this year within the scene. I've done sets, I've done a few things, but I haven't been as active this year in the scene. So for me, it's been quite calm because I've been kind of quiet, mm. bar a few things. But yeah, I've mm. been kind of quiet and just kind of working on a few other things in the background. Mm. But yeah, I've been calm, man. This year, I've, I've been chilling a bit, which mm. I won't be for much longer. But yeah, I've kind of just been chilling a bit and kind of focusing on projects I've got to finish and stuff and not making up too much noise just yet. Why is that? Why has there been the downtime? Um, do you know what I learned? I had to sometimes take care of myself, man. Mm. I was putting a lot of energy into the music and a lot of... And you know, as a creative, you can go down that rabbit hole. Mm. That's me all the time. That's like mm. the story of my life. Um, so, yeah, I just took a little bit of downtime just to kind of focus on myself a bit more. And I'm still doing the music. I'm still focusing. But like I said, I'm just kind of in the background putting together projects and mm. stuff. So I will be dropping things soon and, you mm. know, making up more noise. But, yeah, I've just been kind of like, taking it easy a little bit mm, discipline really is mm. key to a lot of this isn't it and exactly that. getting those fundamentals right because there is a time to push forward and there's a some there's a time to draw back isn't there exactly and that's your creative time isn't it that's it and a lot of people that know me will tell you like i'm i put so much pressure on myself mm. i'm my own worst cri- critic and i put so much pressure on myself and i'm that person that will always feel like no i need to push i need to push but sometimes i just need to relax and mm. Let it come. So that's what I'm trying to, like you said, discipline. Mm. I'm trying to discipline myself right now. Mm. But yeah, man, I'm working on a lot of things, like I said, in the background. I'm just not out on the front line making mm. noise. But there's a lot of noise being made in the studio. Where's that inner pressure come from? Me, man. I'm not going to lie. I've always, I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, which is can be a good and a bad thing. You know, because um, obviously you have attention to detail, you want to always do your best, but then mm-hmm. your best is never enough. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's just me. I've just always been like that. Um, naturally growing up, a lot of things I tend to do, I was naturally good at. Um, but I always, or people would say, oh, you're, you're really good at it. But to me, I was like, no. Nah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's always improvement. I can always do more. So I always push to do more, especially with the music. Mm. I never let myself get comfortable or feel like. Mm. Yeah, I'm where I need to be because I never think I'm where I need to be. Because having the grime as well, that gives the added competitive edge. Yeah. <laughs> which it does. very few music genres allow. <laughs> it, it does. It does. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's always someone doing something new. Um, but yeah, I've also learned to watch other people, mm. which is another thing that I was always, no, nah, this person's doing this, I need to do it. Everyone's journey is their own. So again, I'm just applying that discipline and happy for everyone around me that's doing things. Do you know what I mean? I just got to focus on my own. Progress. Is this a new mind state for Frankie? Is this a more disciplined mind state? How did you come to that conclusion? Um, I don't know. Do you know what? Just again, like I suppose, um, going through the pressure and actually reaching the peaks where I'm just like driving myself insane. Where I told you have to stop now. Just relax and stop being so. Do you know what I mean? Worried that this ain't gonna work out or that you're running behind on this. Um, Obviously, advice from a lot of people around me as well, musicians and just friends. Mm. And yeah, just trying to apply that literally but it's just probably from like i said pushing myself too hard and actually mm. reaching a point where it's like okay you actually need to just mm-hmm. listen to what people say you know and not always be so hard on yourself i'm the hardest person on myself all the time yeah mm. and it's and it's not good do you know what i mean because <clears throat> it can affect your health it can affect so much things i stress myself out mm. so my mind's a lot more clearer and I actually come up with a lot more things when I'm more calm and at ease, as you'd know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it doesn't help that I stress mm-hmm. myself out. So yeah, I had to, I had to, man. I had mm-hmm. to um, apply that discipline and just get with the programme. Because you forget all the things or don't notice the really important things that might be... You let things away. slip by focusing on little mm-hmm. things that you don't need to be focusing on. So yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm learning currently. What was uh, growing up like? Um, in what sense? Just Childhood. in general? Um... It was alright, you know. It's quite. I was quite. I'm quite. I'm from a big family, 
So um, I was always around like my cousins and yeah, a lot of kids in my family. So and I'm one of the oldest siblings. Um, yeah, <laughs> serves you me. right. I'm, I know, <laughs> innit? Amongst my brother and my cousins and stuff. Uh, so yeah, now we was quite close knit growing up. I say now we're getting older. Obviously, the family's not as close. Not everyone, anyway, mm. is as close as it was. So it's not the same. But yeah, we was very tight knit unit um, growing up. So I was always, you know, at my auntie's house with my cousins, and we were always playing out and playing games and stuff like that. So yeah, it was quite eventful for me to be mm. honest. So it was good, man. Yeah, nice. Mm. Who were your influences music wise? Right, so I'm very, very versatile. I listen to all sorts of mm -hmm. random kind of music. But I'd say as younger growing up, I was very much a R&B head, like R&B soul, that kind of stuff. Funny enough, like grime and rap did not come into the picture until like literally my mid late twenties. Really? Yeah, okay. Really late. A lot of people assume, oh, like I grew up like like the rest of them did within the grime scene. Mm. I didn't. I was like in my own bubble, oblivious to this whole scene that was around me. There's a lot of people that I grew up with that did do that and used mm. to spit and that. And I wasn't aware that's what they were doing. Really? It was just like, oh, these are just talking nonsense on the mic again. I didn't know when I was younger, like I didn't really know, I wasn't educated about mm. like rap grime. It was all the same to me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if anyone ever tried to show me, I was like, oh, just, it's just noise. It's just noise. Like I didn't appreciate it. How did it get to this then? How? It, that's it. It was, it was a complete. Um, That's crazy. It's mad. This is what I'm saying. So I never grew up really like listening to rap or grime. My brother, I had people around me that did. I just didn't. I was, I was, all, I was a singer. I used to be a singer back in the day. So I was everything singing. Do you know what I mean? R and B, vocals, all of that stuff. And then. I went for a shift. That's the, that's the best way to explain it. Like I shifted in it. Like I was going through a time where a lot of things was kind of going on. Obviously, I'm growing. I'm evolving. I'm like I'm changing. Yeah, because um, I'm seeing a lot of views differently. Like I went through a lot, a lot of experiences that kind of made me open my eyes and kind of view things differently. And what happened was there was like a shift within me that was happening, where the things I was doing was no longer making me happy. So like the singing, mm. even the modeling when I was doing the modeling. It was no longer like fulfilling. I was like, there's there's something missing. Mm. Um, Cause like I said, I was going through a lot of things at the time. I'm feeling new emotions. Like I was never really an angry person growing up, but I, started, I was going through things where I was starting to feel like anger. I'm starting to feel all these heavy emotions and I didn't know how to release them. And singing wasn't helping and modeling wasn't helping. And so I was just becoming angry, right? Um, and even when I had to go work and whatever, like my employers were like, I was intimidated, like I was intimidating, like people were scared to chat to. I was just very on edge and just an angry person. Yeah, I can imagine you being aggressive on people, man. That shit would be crazy. You can imagine it now. <laughs> Do you know what you can imagine it now because of my, like, Frankie Stay Woke, yeah. of what she's presented from the grime scene. But, but I was, that, you were not, I was like not like that. So mm. a lot of people still getting used to the fact that, because mm. I was very soft, I was very um, timid. I just went like that, not mm. confrontational, nothing. And like I said, I went through a lot of things that kind of, changed things, do you know what I mean? Maybe had to harden up a little bit, made me view things a bit differently. So yeah, I'm experiencing new emotions now, a lot more heavy emotions. And then I didn't know, grime or rap, it just came. I didn't know that's what I needed. But basically what happened was I met someone um, who did music and um, they became a good friend of mine actually. And then they showed me their mixtape. They're not an active artist. So they liked music, they did music, but they did a project, benched it, never ever like actually did anything with it. But showed me this mixtape they did anyway. At the time they showed it, it was probably like four years old when they showed it to me. But um, they played me a couple of tracks and there was one track that they played and I couldn't tell you what it was, yeah? From the moment they played it, it was the beat. It was everything, it was the beat. It was how he came in with the lyrics, like how he came in on the drop, like everything about the track spun my whole world. I was like, rewind this, yeah? And mm -hmm. then I, I kept making him play it, like, play it again, play it again. Then I was like, can you send me that track, please? I just got so obsessed with the tune and then, um, yeah, I like the tune so much, you know, you just learn the words to the tune. Da, da, da. And then something in me was like, I started to feel better. I think that's when I realised that like, this is kind of making me feel better. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, do you happen to have the instrumental to that tune? Because like I said, I was an artist, I was a singer. Mm -hmm. So I was used to in the studio and writing lyrics, just not in rap. No, MC you'd be ad-libbing or whatever. I'd be singing and yeah. So, but obviously, like I said, this guy was rapping. And I was listening to, it was him that I was taking it, I was listening to him, so I was like, have you got an instrumental? Then I basically was like trying to write my own verse, but I used his verse as a template. So, you know, same flow, whatever, just wow. change the words. And then once I got that, I kind of just, I, I edited it a bit flow-wise. And then like I showed him, like, what do you think of this? And he was like, oh my gosh, you just spun my verse out of the water. And he's like, have you ever rapped before? I was like, I don't rap. And he was like, no, you're sick. So obviously he's encouraging me more now. He's like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna send you beats, uh, try to do it again, do it again. You see, once I got the, Concepts because I have a lot of friends around me that rap. Like I said, I grew up with people that MC. Yeah, I just yeah. never 
realise what they was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never understood the concept of rapping. I used mm. to be like to my friend, how do you, how do you rap? I don't get it. They're mm. like, but you sing. I'm like, yeah, but it's not the same. Do you know what I mean? And mm. it's like, you can rap, try it. I used to always try. I'm like, nah, this is ridiculous. So once I finally understood how it worked, that was it. I was off. You see, once I wrote that first verse, mm. I get it now. And so then I just started like getting beats and just writing and writing and writing. And again, I wasn't an artist at this time. I'm just doing this for my own thing now, but it was making me feel better. And so what year was this? What year was this? This was 2017. Because I met you in 2018, 19? 18 or 19. It might have been 19, it was actually. Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, so actually yeah. it could have been 2018, 19, yeah. yeah. Um, but 2017. Because you were buying off then, like... Towards, towards the end of 2017. And what happened was early 2018, I decided to... Because at this point, I've been writing for a few months. Yeah. No one around me knew. This was just a hobby. But I decided to, like, post a video on Instagram. Yeah? <laughs> and, <obviously, laughs> and then obviously, a lot of people was like, oh, Ferrari, you're sick. A lot of people was like, what are you doing? Because that's just not me, innit? Like, they, they still know me as, oh... That's some bravery model. right there, for real. Like, that's something... I don't know what... I was like, let me just post it and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, so it got a little bit of traction, whatever. But again, I'm nobody at this point. This is just, like, my friends and stuff that I've seen is then the pen game challenge came out and as you know that yeah. probably, that birthed a lot of new mm-hmm. rappers MCs and what happened was I saw it um, my brother was like oh you should you should do it I was like no I'm not ready for that <laughs> do you know what I mean no. and then you I think all timid and whoever shit. was running the challenge actually DM'd me personally because I was commenting on all the videos and they were like are you going to do one and I was like Hmm? No, and they were like, I challenge you to do one. I didn't even know who I was talking to but I was like challenge accepted the same day I literally <laughs> wrote one put it up and yeah that is kind of what drew people's attention to me more right so then you got a few people knowing who i am now and starting to like follow me up and that i'm still not knowing who people are i'm still trying to and then um so then i got into that to the habit of just posting up little clips of me spitting mm-hmm. and what happened was this is where i stumbled onto gram and i didn't even realize it because again i still didn't weren't differentiating mm-hmm. to me okay i know how to rap now i'm just finding beats and rapping and i'm writing what makes sense to me on the beat so I'm now finding grime beats, but not realizing, oh, these are rap beats, these are grime beats. So I'm just hearing the beats and I'm just adjusting how I write to the beat, innit? So I'm not realizing, oh, I've now gone from rapping to MC and I'm not realizing that until I've, was it um, Ghetto Coyote? Mm-hmm. I wrote something to that, mm-hmm. I spat it. And that is when, oh, we got a new MC. Doors. Yeah, blue. that's when a lot of people followed me. Oh, who's this new MC? And I'm like, huh? Who? Wow. And then I got invited to Radio Rinse. Never been radio, rinsed for my first radio set, and then I was, do you know what I mean? Met all the other, like, a lot of other female MCs, and I was like, fish in deep water. I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, like, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Just post a couple of videos on my Instagram, and now I'm here. And that's literally how it started. But then that is when I found this is what I needed. This is the release. That's when I started to feel like, yeah. And that served the inner purpose that you yeah. thought you, you felt that you is lacked. Like, you can vent on grime, innit? Yeah. So when I, like I said, I needed to let things out yeah. and then it felt like a safe place to let things out because obviously yeah. the energy, I was like, yeah, this is yeah. what I need. And then I just kind of was acting and modelling that, like, I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Push, I'm going I'll be this right way. Back, I'm going ahead. this yeah. way. So you've got a lot of people just like, where are you going? Like, what's going on? And then, but at the same time, they're like, oh, wow, like very surprised that actually, you're actually quite good at this. And I thought, I know, right? So, yeah. I think with modelling as well, is it's old money, it's old work rules and this kind of box they like to put you in mm. doesn't help with that conformity and what is expected particularly from a female aspect it's like yeah very much because i still get some people and i was like oh, i wish he was like still like modeling like he was like obviously i'll do it now and then but there's people that still kind of prefer that version of me like oh, i wish he was like model frankie again nah no, that. i what i love the most which which is is the naivety mm. of people when they they suddenly see because clearly you're a model You've got like the, I can you've switch got back tri- into it whenever I want. But the fact that you're a grime MC, <laughs> yeah. that's the weight. How sick's that? It's one of a lot of people. I didn't really expect to get any support around those like around me. I thought they were just going to be like, you're crazy, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. But I actually do, like, especially my mum. I was like, oh, wow, what, you're down for it? Yeah. So my mum was like, yeah, my mum's like, yeah, my mum, she's a grime MC, you should listen to her. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's a lot of support around me. Once they saw I was taking it serious and they saw, like, you're actually mm. good at this, they were like, all right, cool, we're with you. At first, they thought I was having, like, a little bit of a midlife crisis, like, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? But once they kind of saw the vision, it was like, okay cool we're with you now so they're, they're used to it now innit? and like i said a lot of people have now seen mm. model frankie's still there mm. it's just a different dynamic innit? I've got, yeah, I th- yeah and i think it's fantastic the, the the vision doesn't always need to be clear to people and i think that's where a lot of art history um people in entertainment get mm. get it confused because that it shouldn't be 
transparent and clear as day what the plan is. Yeah. Because you have to force the ideas. You have to get people on side and convert them to that idea. This is it. Why shouldn't Grime... I mean, Skepta seems to be doing pretty good with the modelling. Right? <laughs> this is the thing. It's like people didn't think there was room for both yeah. kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? But I, why not? Yeah. Why can't there be? Do you know what I mean? And then there's people that's like... Um, like I have some of my friends say, like, why don't you, like, fuse the two? And I'm like, I, they're like, you can do, like, model Frankie, but while spitting grind bars, but I'm like, nah, I kind of, <laughs> I don't know, maybe one day, but I kind of like to keep the two separate for now. You're in a really unique place, mm. which is awesome to see. You know? okay, yeah, man, I like to play off both sides, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of to the point of the name as well, like the Frankie Stay Woke. Mm. I really like it being said together. Obviously, it's my name, so people's like, Frankie Stay Woke. But to me, like, I'm Frankie and I'm Stay Woke when I tap into... Because, mm. you know, I've got, like, the rap people that listen to me and follow me will know, yeah, there's grime, show, show, show. And then there's me that, like, I like to do rap and I like mm. to do, like, slower beats and unpack stuff and get, like, a lot deeper and mm. stuff like that. To me, there's two different characters, do you know what I mean? Mm. So there's Frankie and Stay Woke. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't see myself as like Frank Stay Woke. It's just two different sides of me. You must have garnered a lot of female admirers and fans, people that... I do, you know. I have a lot of... Fe- yeah, no, I do. Um, both, to be fair, it's quite mixed, but I, I can do imagine. get a lot yeah. of females, a lot of people that DM me, um, really nice and send messages as well. Um, and it's nice, man. It's like a, it's, it's validation, mm. do you know what I mean? And it's what kind of keeps me... It's definitely what keeps me driven and keeps me going. Yeah. Um, my my aim for it was never, you know, oh, I want to be famous. I want to be. I just wanted to do something that made me happy or feel better about myself. Mm. And if I can kind of help anyone else in the meantime by what I say, that's a bonus. I it's love that. Bonus, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And the future is music. More releases. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I'm not done with music yet. Not by far. Um, but yeah, definitely more releases. More, um, just different. I mean, like, I want to explore a bit more, you know, away from the grime a little bit. Obviously, I'll never stop doing grime, but I just want to, like you said, write quite versatile. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think I got comfortable in the grime for a minute. I got comfortable in it, so it will still always be there, but I want to, like, yeah, explore different avenues. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, incorporate a bit more of the singing, go back a bit to the rapping, because when it comes to my releases, um, as much as people see me on Instagram and whatever, do rap and do other things, my releases are purely grime. Mm. I've only ever released grime. So yeah, I want to kind of put more releases out. That's different genres, you know what I mean? UK mm. rap, even a bit of, maybe a bit of R&B type. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, that's my ri- that's where I originate from, like R&B, so I would like to incorporate that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, man, and just new, new little ventures. But I've got a few things in the pipeline, like I said, so definitely more drops. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere at all. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, stay woke. Thank you, my darling. Imagine, wicked, man. wicked Thank hangs. Thank you for having me. That's it. They're getting to some freestyle sessions right now. Next podcast. Till next time. Easy. <laughs>